The MMA Discussion Podcast brought to you by SportsofAnarchy.com. We're also brought to you by our sponsor, SubmissionFC.com. Go to SubmissionFC.com to get all your best Brazilian jiu-jitsu gear. I also want to shout them out. They sent me a new ranked bamboo rash guard. It's really sweet, and I mean, it's the best. I wear it for jiu-jitsu nonstop now, and I'm here with uh, my co-host, Nick Peralta. This is Chris Paluca, and we're going to get started, guys. Booyah. Now, this on, is, man? we're okay about 12, 12 hours removed by the time this podcast comes out from the news that hit, we're just going to start it off and hit it bluntly, that Anderson Silva, uh, what, four days removed from his fight, and we all now are probably probably aware by now that Anderson Silva failed uh, a, a January 9th drug test taken on that date for a drug called, I don't even know how to pronounce it, uh, Drodos, uh, what is it, let me take a minute to assess the word, um, Drostanolone, Drostanolone, anything that starts with the O-N-E is generally a steroid, and that's essentially what he popped for, a steroid ta- uh, metabolite, he also popped for Androstan, which is uh, not a steroid, but like a a, a pre. It's, a, uh, it's like a steroid pre- hormone. Yeah, exactly. Like it's a, it's like a steroid simulation essentially because it's not essentially it doesn't do what steroids do, which is like you're like the average thinker thinks steroid oh makes you big and muscular and does this and that, but what steroids also does uh, medically is enhance your body's organs into doing things that. Like if you have a condition for certain people, like say a woman can't, like you know her kidney is weak, they give it steroids, it gets stronger and it can fight, you know, it, can, yeah. it, it functions properly. So it, it acts more like that. Banned. I'm sorry. The point of the matter is they're both banned. By they're the both banned. Yes, big no nos. And <laughs> so Anderson Silva popped for both of these drugs, and I gotta say that um, it's pretty depressing. <laughs> In the 12 hours that will have passed by now, by the time this is out, I, just in the first hour alone that it's been since we've heard about it, it's really affected a, a lot of how MMA fans really are perceiving the sport right now. I'm sure there are just casual fans that will always remain that way, um, but there are a lot of hardcore fans such as you, such as uh, uh, such as you know our admin Jonas, who's taking it probably the worst because he's at a bar right now. <laughs> Like, he was literally going to come on the podcast, he heard that Anderson popped, and then he decided to go to the bar instead. That's how upset he is about it. Yeah, I mean, dude, I'm completely heartbroken. Anderson Silva, like, before I ever really watched MMA, like, as a hardcore fan, which maybe I started about four years ago, before that, I knew who Anderson Silva was. I always would watch him fight whenever I could, and he's the reason I got into MMA. He's the reason why I started training. And if if there was no Anderson Silva, I probably wouldn't be as into MMA as I am now. And I owe him a lot, but I'm just completely heartbroken by this. Like, things don't surprise me in MMA that much anymore. Well, they surprise me. I would say a better word, shock me. They don't shock me as much in MMA anymore. Like, John Jones popping for cocaine, uh, TJ Dillashaw beating Hennon Burrell, that they surprise me. But the only things that have shocked me in the last few years is Anderson breaking his leg, Anderson getting knocked out, and now this. Yeah, I mean, well, it's just he's always had this sense of like you just know that he's clean. You know, there's just such a wily thing about him. He has that aura of invincibility, and with that invincibility comes you thinking that he can't do something like this. You know what I mean? Um, he's never popped for anything yeah. before in his career, as far as I as far as I know. Um, you know, he's all he's he's taken such a a you know. Uh, such a stance against drugs as well, which is kind of the hypocritical part. Um, because what is it? He, I have here a quote that Anderson said, uh, I believe a, a year and a half ago when Chael popped, or no, like about a, like last summer actually, when when Chael popped. You know what I mean? This is his quote, Anderson's quote. This is not bad for me. This is bad for the sport. And he's referring to uh, Chael popping, I, I believe. Uh, people around the world love the UFC, but the kids love the UFC, and their families love the UFC. It's bad for the sport. I don't think this is good because the sport can change the lives of the kids and the people in the world. When the guys test for steroids, it's bad because this is a problem. It's bad not just for the UFC, but for the sport. 
when the guys test for steroids, they should have no more fights. When you use the steroids, you use them for a long time. When you use the steroids for a long time, you have a problem. It's a drug and it's not good for the sport, end quote. Now, <laughs> reading that just makes it worse. <laughs> Cause, you know. and it does make it worse. And another thing, I don't have a direct quote, but at, I believe, the post-fight press conference after Anderson beat Nick Diaz and he went and uh, embraced John Jones outside of the cage, uh, he was saying, John Jones is my friend. I told him he has to do better for the kids who watch him, look up to him because he uh, tested positive for cocaine, which obviously it's a different type of thing, but... Still, you can't be saying the kids look up to him. He has to be better. He has to do better if you're doing steroids. And it's very hypocritical in my opinion. Oh, very. I mean, uh, <laughs> Man, I looked so up this drug. I looked up if that. there's any. I, I looked up this drug. I wanted to see if there was any possible uh, reason other than the what it being a steroid that he could be using it for. Um, and basically what this the, – the first one that he popped for, the um, – what what is it called again? I wrote it down. It's so hard to say. Give me a sec here, people. Joe Stan Joe Stan alone. I'll just we'll just go with that. Um, the first one that is a drug that usually actually helps people fight off cancer. <laughs> what? Yeah. Other than of, but it's also used when uh, it's been uh. It's been recorded in the past in other sports such as baseball and football. This just uh, steroid has been used to also, you know, cycle. You know what I mean? It cycles it's probably out. Harder to, it's probably harder to test for. Yeah. And they found just you metabolites. Know, they didn't find – they didn't find like the full drug, the full metabolites. And I mean it was yeah, almost Yeah, I'm kind of talking on my ass with that because I don't really know, but I would just assume so. Yeah, other fighters that have popped for this drug are Kevin Casey, Brian Ortega, and Piotr Hallman, two of which were in the last year. So, yeah. um, so this drug seems to be taking over our sport, which is pissing me off. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, it's just I'm talking. I mean, I'm talking to all our our admins, my well, my well close friends that are huge MMA fans. <laughs> you know, and it's just uh. God, man, I just I feel like such a sad vibe coming from the MMA community right now, and um, it's just crazy because you just never think that a guy like that's like that that's almost like Michael Jordan popping for something in basketball. Basically. You know how fucked what basketball would be for a while if Michael Jordan got pissed hot. Yeah, or something? back in the day, and it's like it's like uh, if Floyd Mayweather popped now. Yeah. Oh well, boxing would be dead in a fucking hole by then. Oh, yeah. I mean. There are points where you would think at some point the sport can recover, and now I feel like that's going to be it. And this year is such a fucking drag, dude. This year is already yeah, in the shitter. Only, it's been one last, month, and this year is last, already in the shitter. Yeah, you have two of the top five, top three, pound for pound greats. One pops for coke, the other pops for steroid. And, and then we have so many injuries to fight. We have Weidman, who just fell out of his UFC 183 yeah, fight. To update you, fight yeah. With another injury, we have Wonderboy Thompson who fell out of his main event with Brandon Thatch, which was – I was expecting a great fight out of that one. We have all these injuries in the last few weeks. We have two of our biggest stars popping for drugs. and Yeah, Vitor being just, a prancy little puss saying he doesn't want to fight anybody right now <laughs> even though he's been awesome. That's Vitor. That's Vitor. They are, he's they, talking me, bro. He's let's talking Let's not get me. off topic here because I have a little bit to say about Vitor. Well, go ahead. That. Yeah, go ahead. Well, well I'll, I'll, later on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up. The, but yeah, it just it sucks that Anderson popped. It's just because you never expected it. And he's he's been such a huge inspiration to so many people. It's so hard to just hear that. And I mean, it, it tarnishes his legacy a little bit. Yeah, I I don't expect that he's done it before. He's never popped for it. And I I kind of see why he might have done it now, just because of his long layoff. He is getting older, all that. Which I'm not giving any excuses. I just understand why he might do it now. But it does take away from his. Long like see a little bit and that's just it sucks i don't have a better word for it it's i mean you think of any sport where, where the big names like hockey with wayne gretzky yeah basketball with michael jordan that's the example i'm trying to make you football with joe montana or bo jackson and, and uh man it's just 
the Anders, Anderson Silva is, you know, you can say that name, you think all the great things he's done, you think MMA, you think UFC. Man, this year is such shit, man. It's so bad. It's so it's bad. Really bad. It, the month of January, in terms of fights, were very good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but it's just like all the things that could go wrong aside from that happened. Yeah, like, that's, like man, and I was saying a few weeks back on, on a podcast that, you know, the politics around MMA are just pissing me off. You know, the thing with Jones, aside from the fight that Jones had with DC, um, but, you know, the thing with Jones, the uh, people saying they're done with MMA, people, um, you know, people saying that, you know, that they won't, you know, be a fan anymore if, if he doesn't get punished or if something doesn't get done about this or if it doesn't go to New York, a lot da 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 and it's like now I'm hearing it more so right now, but at the same time I'm, I'm thinking like, man, can I even fault them if for for this specific this specific thing? Let's not and we haven't even mentioned that Nick Diaz also popped for uh, marijuana metabolites, but that is who doesn't expect that? I, <laughs> Are you, I mean, that's not even surprising. We didn't even bring that up, but yeah, that that's another that's piece of There's the not news. Much to say about that. There isn't. I mean, it's it's Nate, or I mean, it's Nick. I mean, it's probably why he missed his plane. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that test was specifically post fight, so Nick can actually be punished for that. Um, which you know, which is kind of silly thinking he's about to get punished for marijuana when John Jones didn't even get punished for coke. Well, I guess he did. He got fined, but you know, um, he's he's gonna get way more punished for marijuana than Jones will for cocaine. You know. I'm thinking, I mean, at the same time, he did, what, that would be, like, his third negative test, or his third positive test. Yeah. Uh, man. Yeah, but they they won't get, they will, if he ever fights again, they'll let him fight. He's not Matt Riddle where they don't care and they can just release him. Yeah. He's Nick Diaz. He's one of the bigger stars in the sport right now. They're not, not going to just release him based on that. Yeah. And that's if he ever fights again. You never know. But I, I think he will, but who knows? Yeah, two years later, <laughs> gonna be fighting. He made some money. He made a ha- he made half a mil just reported it in that fight. So. That means he would have made a mil if he won. That's kind of crazy. Yeah, exa- I mean no, that's not definite because Anderson makes six hundred for a show and then two hundred for win. So sometimes uh, they have a little that's bit different gay. contracts. What? Yeah. The, what, I, why aren't you giving him his mil? It's Anderson Silva. I guess. When I guess when someone makes such an amount of money, they do it a little bit differently. That's kind of bullshit, you know. In my opinion, well, he still made he still made eight hundred grand just for. No, I want I want fight. him to make his mill. That's stupid. Yeah, he probably well he probably I mean, well he definitely made over a mill based on pay per view cuts and sponsors and all that. I know, but you can't incorporate that into how you pay a man. That's stupid. Yeah, well, well, they they worked out a, his deal for a reason, I'm sure. I guess, but... Right. And another thing, just before we get off the topic of the drug test now, I mean, uh, you're, we're starting to understand what, more why GSP left the sport. Well, he did. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of pictures of him, you know, saying, oh, he's the GOAT now. Silva's, Silva's out. Silva's yeah, been, I mean, GSP... Steven, Silva just said, unseated himself, essentially. GSP had such a stance on drugs that he doesn't even want to come back to fight because he thinks... Everyone's running rampant on steroids in the UFC, which, I mean, I'm not sure if it's definitely true. He also wants more testing, which they are starting to incorporate more testing. They're catching a lot more guys now, but a lot of guys are popping, and GSP was right about that. Yeah. What's funny is I'm like, it's like, you know, um, people want to say, oh, the UFC is corrupt and this and that and the other. If they were corrupt, no way would they have let this come out. <laughs> they would have paid somebody under the table. They would have done something because you can't. I mean, there's an immediate, obvious, emotional impact that this has on, on the sport in general. And like like Anderson Silva's quote said, I mean, when he was saying that, you know, he's saying it. It's bad for the sport. It's bad for this. And it's and it's like it's whenever anybody else does it, even Chael Sonnen, it's bad but it's not that bad he yeah. does it it's really bad like exactly. it's never i've never felt this way about a test be, coming out ever no yeah, i mean i mean i felt angry about the about the john jones test 
um, mainly because because nothing was being done about it. Um, I didn't feel like a lot was even being done for John Jones as a person, as for his health, you know, and everything. Um, but this is just sad, man. You know, I just can't help but just feel upset. And yeah, it's definitely disappointing. I think I can't say betrayed because I wasn't even his biggest fan. I'm, I, you know, I, I, I I've always I was said. One of his biggest fan. I can definitely say that. Yeah, like I, I've always, uh, I've, I started watching the sport, watching guys like Chris Lieben, and then Anderson Silva came around, and you know, I was always like, wow, that guy is incredible. And then after the Talis ladies fight, I never really rooted for him again. Um, and, uh, and you know, so for of course, a f uh, like five years later or four years later, you know, I just he kept dismantling people. Uh, and, 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 you know, I was always rooting for the other guy. Um, it's why I became a fan of Chael, essentially. <laughs> um, but, it's, you know, I, I've, I've never once deemed him not the greatest fighter out in the world right now. Because he, he always seemed like, it always seemed like he was to me. You know, his skills proved it. It felt like he backed it up each and every way. Uh, and now it's just... I really wish he would have just stayed away once he broke his leg, <laughs> oh, because I, I, he was better off retiring from that than if should he never fight fight again now, you know. Yeah, I mean, if he walks it, away it just, now, yeah, it's, it's just way hard worse. to it's hard to say anything at this point. I think we've done a pretty good job of covering this, and I think we should get just move into UFC 183, which was all around. It was a pretty good card. Yeah, I mean, it it capped off a really good month of fights. I mean, and, you know, that's what I paid attention to. I mean, this is like what we were talking about just now with Anderson is just too much to ignore. But when it comes yeah. down to the fights, this month has been awesome. There's been a lot of great fights. Uh, yeah, I mean, the events, the events have been really completely stacked, but we've had a lot of, like, top-heavy events. We've had Conor McGregor, John Jones, Anderson Silva, Nick Diaz. So, I mean... It's been a lot of Anthony good, Rumble Johnson, which is a big one for me. Yeah. If he ever yeah. pops, then I will be done. I <laughs> God help me if he pops, man. I'll cry. Also, I will. I'm like close to crying only because of everybody else's reaction to this because I I just see them being so let down and I just yeah. feel like this really hurts the UFC more so than anything ever could. Not the John Jones thing, not the, you know, not not the number of events. Not the not the bullshit politics that come from you know yeah. fighter pays and commissions and judges decisions and drug testing and all that other shit. This is way worse than all of it. You know, it's so yeah, much mean, that it doesn't. It was affect really, me. it was really just. It's uh, it's just not good news. I, I I more so wonder what Anderson's gonna say when they come out. And Ask him about it. God, I'd love to know. I'm sure people in Brazil or LA, wherever he's at, are, are looking for him, going, "Dude, what the?" Yeah, fuck I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure someone will get a hold of him and they'll find some things out eventually. But um, yeah, getting into the fight, where do you want to start with? Uh, the Tal Watson. Um, that was a that was a decent fight, but you were right. It ended up being uh, one of those fights where it was kind of mellow paced. Uh, yeah, and Natal kind of, and like I said, and, you know, Natal knew what he was doing in there. He was able to uh, keep the distance, the range, and, and not get hit too much, and was able to be the the, the, the quicker guy on the feet, to the the guy first to the punch. So uh, yeah. he, he had a I great mean, performance, and he looked like Natal, the guy who knows how to win. Yeah, I mean, unless he gets caught. I, I might have made a bad pick going with Watson. I thought he'd catch him eventually with something, or just. I thought he'd be able to defend the takedown a lot better than he did because yeah. I forget that he's British and can't defend the takedown. <laughs> oh, 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 how dare but, you. Uh, I'm just joking, but <laughs> he couldn't defend the takedown for anything in that fight. He was just getting taken down at will pretty much. He got taken down eight times out of 13 attempts, which <laughs> that really says something. And he got outstruck, so it just wasn't a fun fight. It was in the tall dominated for the most part. And he got the win. Um, yeah, moving on, I guess we can go into McCall Lineker now, which was another. Let's talk about that for real quick. Let's talk before uh, before we even get into the the weight missing or weight. the fight. No, but yeah, him missing weight. Uh, Again. that's just really it, yeah for like the fifth time. Come on, dude. Anyway, he weighed in at one thirty. He was four pounds over. 
Yeah, it's not even that he was four pounds over. The guy's never actually hit 125 on the mark. Anytime he's I actually, he's, I think he's hit 126. With he's no only check. ever hit 126. That's it. Never hit 125. I, I don't. I don't think he missed weight with Dolce. If he, I don't understand why. If he wants to be the champion at 125, he wouldn't just stick with Dolce if he made weight with him. Because Dolce makes people do like gay porn or something. I don't know. According to BJ porn. Penn, I don't. Know. <laughs> I, I'm not too sure if I believe much of what BJ saying now. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, I just, I find it weird that guys like Lineker and Gastelum, I know Dolce does cost a lot of money, and I don't know what goes on behind the scenes, but, I mean, it seems like it's worth it if he's having you make weight. Yeah, he makes Johnny Hendricks make weight, and that's a dude that always has a hard time cutting weight. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, uh, he's really... He's known none of his guys have ever missed weight like completely, and like they've always made. Really, weight, he's never had one guy under him not make weight. Um, Hendricks missed weight for the first Lawler fight, I believe, but that was just because their scale was messed up. But then they went back and he made weight an hour later. So no one's ever officially missed weight with Dolce. I gotta look that up. But if so, then everybody Dolce needs to clone himself and he needs to disperse yeah, himself. Just go okay. I or he think, needs to I, make himself a hologram and just. Yeah, the <laughs> only thing I, I just don't understand why they would work with Dolce and then stop working with him. Maybe it was just personalities didn't work. Maybe they. Oh well, I, actually, I Dolce I, Dolce I, did an interview with MMA Junkie. I remember, and and he said that the language barrier was the hardest part. You know. Oh, uh, so. yeah. With Gaslam, I, I'm pretty sure it was just that it was a bit too much money, and then they. I don't know why they didn't get back together on that, but. Maybe. Still, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, going into the fight itself, it it was a, it wasn't a bad fight. Though. It was pretty exciting for the most part. Oh yeah, it was a good fight. It was like the first fight of the night pick for me. Yeah, um, I mean, McCall did pretty well. I mean, McCall uh, got one of six takedowns. He did land decent amount of strikes. I I thought it was a close fight. I, I'm. No, Lineker won two of three rounds. I just it's not coming to me which rounds he won exactly. I think it was two and three. I believe uh excuse me. I believe him McCall won the first. He was able to, you know, start off strong and then after got that take down. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, got, got the takedown controlled for the longest time. Uh and then Lineker just kinda came after him. Yeah, it shows it shows where the power puncher Lineker is that he won a fight. With no takedowns, he was had less significant strikes and less total strikes. He actually tried to make you make make me eat my oh, words. Submission. Yeah, I tried to make it to submission. I remember when we were talking about his 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 so called black belt, like, just because he's right. Brazilian. I, I might have been wrong. <laughs> <laughs> submitting McCall twice, very close. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, uh, and McCall props to him for showing such tight. Jiu-Jitsu defense, because Lineker really had that, and he's a strong guy, too. I'm, You know, yeah. I would have thought his brute strength alone already in that good of a position would have, would have, uh, would I thought he was screwed. I thought, oh, he's going to get it. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, But, he, you know, so props to McCall for being able to get out of that, to eating all those shots. It just, it, 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 it kind of makes, it. even though it's bad that Lineker has always missed weight at 125, and then yeah, it also kind of makes it seem like it's a good thing that he's going to 135 because he can hang with one of the fastest fighters in the world. McCall is simply yeah. number three or four or two. He's uh, he's top five fastest dude you'll ever fight. Hand, yeah. head, hand speed, foot movement, he's fast. And he's got good. He had good combinations going in there. He already has a great grappling game. He's he's really well. He's a really, really good mixed martial artist. He really is. Um, yeah, definitely. And, and so mean, the fact that he could hang with the guy like that, you know, makes me think that you know he would do good at 135. Um, yeah, and for Lineker, I mean, him moving up to 35 now, it's a good thing because it adds a little bit of depth to the 35 division, but it also takes away a title contender from. Oh yeah, he totally yeah. fucked us. He totally yeah. fucked the the little flyweight division. They're screwed now. What are they gonna yeah. do? They just he yeah, basically cut maybe. Demetrius out of a seasonal check. He, maybe they have Horiguchi in there, but who knows at this point? I'm not too sure. But um, that would need also, to be like on a Fox card. <laughs> just you can't yeah. put that on pay per view right now. Oh, definitely. Horiguchi I mean, just doesn't have the following to, yet. It's hard enough to put DJ on any pay per view, no matter who he's fighting. But another thing that was funny about this fight. I was at um I was watching the fight with a couple of friends from the gym, 
a couple pro fighters, and we were all kind of clowning on Lineker because the guy throws nothing but hooks. He throws three le- three right hooks to set up a left hook, and three left hooks to set up a right hook. Yeah, he needs he to throw, throw more straight. He, he might throw mix up a hook to the body, and then he'll he'll see, he sets up hooks with hooks. He doesn't set them out with jabs, kicks, anything. He just sets up hooks on hooks. When yeah, he, he needs and to. He needs to. He definitely needs to incorporate, uh, you know, a more front frontal attack, meaning straight strikes and jabs. If he'd have implemented that jabs, McCall's face would have looked more fucked up than it already did. Yeah, we were, we were kind of clowning him. We're like, all right, basically just uh, put your head down and you won't get hit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Ed Lineker has the potential to be really good, but he certainly has a lot to learn before he makes it to the, like the yeah. top ten of that division. I think. I think DJ would have ate him alive anyway. Yeah. By the way, yesterday it was announced that Rafael. Oh, I don't know if that was yesterday, but uh, it was yeah. announced that Rafael Sunsao uh, br- fractured his ankle, so he's out of the main event with Uriah Faber, and it leaves an opening. Um, and just because I'm salty, I would like it if Lineker took that spot against Faber. Um, I don't know how long it would take. I don't know how how long away is that fight? Uh, a month. It's March something, March 13th, so a month away. Yeah, it's a little close. I don't know if Lineker will be able to make it, but it would be cool to see. It would, uh, yeah, it'd be interesting. Definitely interesting debut for him on his spot. Um, we'll talk about who we think should go into that main event later. Um, let's move on. Uh, what's the next fight? I forget. Oh, Derek Brunson with that that uh, starching of uh, Ed Herman, the guy who is supposedly yeah. such a bad matchup for Anderson Silva. <laughs> Dude, I, I I honestly thought going into this. Fight Derek Brunson. It was just gonna out wrestle Ed Herman. I thought this was gonna be really boring, and it turns out I was really wrong. Oh yeah, that's right, huh? You were, <laughs> you thought the first I two mean, middleweight fights that. were gonna be, and then that one, yeah, he ended up shutting you up, and he gave you a little dance. So yeah, most people thought that though. I don't just say it was me. I didn't think that. Did I say that? I don't think I did. I don't know. I think a majority of people felt that way though. All right. Well, that's true, but I didn't say that just for the record. But yeah, a, a tremendous performance. Yeah, yeah, that Brenson is a. I was still right. What? How dare you? I still pick Brunson. It's all good. <laughs> well, I, I think. Uh, what is that? That's his like third fight in a row. He's won now. Um, let me see. I could be wrong. There's a reason he's on the prelims. Let's look it up. Uh, his second fight. Okay. Brunson he, had. He decisioned Lorenz Larkin in his last fight at 177, the Dillashaw Soto pay per view. Lost to Yoel Romero in that crazy fight where Yoel had to come back after two rounds. He lost to two Brunson. Um. So, I mean, a good. I mean, great fight overall for him. I mean, it was quick. He landed two yeah, good lefts. He's four and what? He's four and one in the UFC. His only loss came to Romero. That's good. That's pretty good. And he's got a submission of Brian Houston. Yeah, Lorenz Lonkin's a good win. Ed Herman is a very veteranized guy, so it's a great win for him yeah. in in that regard. And it, was, yeah, and it was just over thirty seconds he landed. I'm pretty sure it was a straight right, if I'm not mistaken. Nah, straight left. He landed two straight lefts to the straight face. Left. Yeah. Two straight lefts, and then uh, he put him against yeah. the cage, and then the right actually dropped him. So I guess you're not wrong. Um, uh, and and then after I was that the move of the fight, cool. the move of that fight, the Metro PCS move of the fight was that that dance. <laughs> that dance was not, awesome. He's like, uh, yeah. Not too much to say about this one. It, not too much to say about this one. It was just really impressive. It was quick. Runs. Yeah, you can't really scale his skill set off of the, other than those hands, man. You got to watch out for him. He's starting to get better. So Derek Brunson, good things looking up for him. Uh, who should he fight next at middleweight? I'm kind of wondering uh, that. I don't know. I mean, would you give him a guy who's ranked right now or no? Nah, not really, no. I'd probably give him like uh, – actually, you know, maybe, maybe give him Tim I mean, Bosch. I'd give him Tim there. Bosch. How about that? Tim Bosch seems to be like that Bosch? gatekeeper uh, guy. I – He's uh, uh after after this loss he's now fourteen or fit thirteen now because that was like two losses in a row for him I think oh no actually wait no he came off no, a win over Brad Tavares balls. but Brad Tavares wasn't ranked so um, does Mark Munoz have a fight he 
does not, but I guarantee you they're going to put him on that Philippines card. I mean, you can, you can put Mark Munoz in there with Brunson if you want. I mean, that's not the worst fight to make. Nah, but see, you know what they'll end up doing since he's the only Filipino guy in the UFC? They'll make it, put him in the main event even though he hasn't won a fight in a while. He's just a big name yeah. even though, you know, <laughs> he hasn't won yeah, a... I'm not, right, go ahead. I'm not entirely sure who you give Brunson if you give him someone. Maybe you just go with someone outside of the top top 15. Maybe you give him um, the winner of Luke Barnett and... um. What's this guy's name? Oh, I can't. I can't remember his name for the life of me right now. It just slipped my mind. Is he Brazilian? No, no, no. He's fighting. Um. Damn it! I can't think of his name. I'll I'll, I'll come up with it in a second. <laughs> come up. <laughs> but no, I, I like I, I like the Tim Bosch fight. That makes more sense. That's a good test for him. Clint I think. Hester. Clint. Clint he, oh, he's fighting Clint. That's, that's actually a fun fight. Yeah. Um. I, I like uh, the Tim Bosch fight just because, you know, it's a good test for, for him. For Tim Bosch, he's kind of been back and forth between wins, and so he really needs to show he can still contend with the up-and-comers at least. I think, you know, he needs to prove that now. So with yeah. Derek Brunson, that makes the most sense. So I think Tim Bosch is the best fight. I am now excited about that Clint hester look Barnett fight, and we'll talk about yeah, that when the day comes. Yeah, so then the main event, oh, man, the fight of the night, I thought, because as much as I love the Talos ladies Tim Bosch fight, I thought that this fight was fight of the night. Misha Tate versus Sarah McMahon. Um, that fight was crazy. And Misha Tate, sh you know, showed, man, that she's Who a baller. Who, Who called it? it? Did you call it? I don't remember. Yes, I did. I'm the only one. Yeah, I, yeah, I remember I said Sarah McMahon would win, so I was wrong there. I was almost right. <laughs> you and Chris called Sarah McMahon. Yeah, but, you know, uh, we were almost right. But, man, just Tate, I got to give her props. That was incredible. Her comeback was uh, astounding. That was great. Yeah, she got she got hit bad with that overhand. She was yeah, she got pot. I mean, you see it in slow motion. She got hit as clean as you can get hit. I mean, that's a punch that should knock people out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're I mean, thinking like, oh, he landed at that like that. Oh, how's yeah. he not out? I mean, in the women's one thirty five pound division. Not a lot of punches are gonna knock you out. But that should have knocked her out. <laughs> I mean, any other woman, I'm pretty sure might have knocked him out. I mean, you put uh, Leslie Slit Smith or maybe Jessica I. If or you put a, if you put a striker in there with power, maybe. But I mean, I know she's not a Jessica, striker with power, Sarah but McMahon she's a grappler with well. power. So a I mean. lot of, yeah, oh yeah. But you, the thing is, is like one thirty-five. You don't see a lot of clean knockouts. It's very rare in the women's division. You don't see a lot of clean knockouts. That was basically as close as you're gonna get without acting. Yeah, because she hit her so clean. That's the point. It's like just wow. Yeah. You know? Uh, Holly Holm gets it done, but she also utilizes yeah, but, kicks. Yeah, you know? that's Holly Holm. We know. <laughs> All right. Cool. But, yeah, but I am really impressed with Misha Tate's comeback. I mean, Sarah McMahon did it damage in the first round. She stood on top. She won the round. That was just close to being a 10-8 round. Uh, I think one judge did score a 10-8 round because there's a majority decision. Mm -hmm. um, and then Misha came back in the second and third round round looked really good she dominated the third round i believe yeah the second round was looking really close until the end where she uh yeah. got on top got near the got the mount at the end so she was able to take that round back and then in yeah, the next round, round totally dominated. dominated got a near 10-8 uh yeah. started just beating the shit out of her it was a great fight i thought that was fight of the night in my opinion so i yeah, it thought was, it got yeah. robbed but yeah it definitely was close to being a fight of the, it, in my opinion it definitely could have been a fight of the night too i think just because of the third round, the lack of action really in the third round, aside from Misha controlling and just dominating Sarah, that's probably why I didn't get it. And Ladies Bosch was just to go in the pocket and trade and just throw haymakers and get her arms stuck together because it looks cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and with that win, Misha Tate called out uh, Betch Carrera. Uh, and, yeah, that's a good fight. I, I like that fight. What's the fight? They, uh, I believe that you know it was never set, but like it was like in the works, and then it just didn't like happen. I, they, oh yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, because I remember it was in the works at one point, and then uh, so yeah, that's what happened. Official. Yeah, exactly. Uh, McMahon has got to take that step down, which sucks because both of these win. I think she proved that she belongs at least where she's at, um, because she almost beat McTate, and you know, uh, that was yeah. a close fight. It was a great fight. Um, so yeah, Tate Carrera, I'd love to see that next. Yeah, it'd definitely be interesting. Mm -hmm. we'll go to the main card. What the the opener, 
the Alves mean fight. Now I was close to calling that one too. <laughs> I called the second round. T- I called you called a bunch of fights out. that became comebacks. I'm so mad. Yeah, I know. I I did really well with predicting this card. I yeah. A, I could have won some serious money on this card. I predicted every ca- fight in the main card correctly. I got Alves by a second round knockout. Uh, you didn't. Uh, you did. I don't remember you calling the Gaslam fight correctly. No, I did. I said Woodley. Uh, did you? Let's see. I, I, I mean, are you going by our MMA fantasy thing that we do, that you and me? Um, well, I'm not sure if I – I don't remember correctly on the podcast, but after Woodley – I mean, after Gaston missed Wade, I did go Woodley. All right. Let's see what your picks were. <laughs> on there, I won't say that that's what you officially said on the podcast because I just honestly can't remember what Oh, yeah, said. no. My picks on there were all wrong. Right, but let's get into mean versus Woodley. Uh, versus that Alves. was a great fight. Now, I told you that that dude had awkward striking and to the point yeah, where it would right. stifle Alves. He won that first round, hands down. And Alves, then Alves yeah, comes Alves in right. and then just smack, crackled right off of his stump, right off the liver, just boom, kidney, just every – like, Oh, is that where he got him? Somewhere. I'm yeah. trying to remember. Uh, he got him somewhere yeah, got that – and then Mean went down, and he didn't even bother defending himself. He was just like, oh, I'm done. Done. Oh, yeah. Mean, mean was looking good in that first round. He was landing a lot of punches, and he was mixing it up well. He had Alves hurt a few times, especially towards the end of the round. He was beating him up pretty well. And I, and then after that, we just saw Alves come out in the second round, land that big kick, and it only took Alves 40 seconds a second out of nowhere. landed a huge kick. And he just finished the fight like that. I mean, Al, we all know how hard Tiago Alves kicks. Even though he looked a little rusty in there in the first round, you can't count that guy out of a fight. Because if he lands, especially to the body, that's no good. Yeah, man. Uh, that guy's won by uh, – and now with that, he's one of the few fighters that joins the list of guys who's finished the fight by leg kicks, body a body kick, and head kicks. Yeah, that's impressive. Yeah. Man, just, you got to be careful with that dude, man. And uh, I'm excited now that he's back. He actually is in the rankings now. He's number 13. Oh, uh, nice. Yeah. And so with that, I wonder who he fights next. I personally would like to see him fight uh, Matt Brown, but that's just me. Matt Brown's fighting Hendricks. No, I know. So, I mean, after that fight's over. but Maybe he can fight the winner of that unless Hendricks goes back in there. I think Hendricks would probably get a title shot if he wins, but. Yeah. Depending on how, like I said, it's depending on how Rory Hector looks as well. Um, uh, does Dong Young Kim have a fight? He doesn't. It's weird since he lost to Woodley, I believe, in uh, when was that fight? That was like October or something, or no, pretty yeah, early. That was, a that. That, was a, that was at that near the that was in the second half of last year. I just can't remember the month. Uh, but yeah. Uh, yeah, it was in August. Since that knockout. To Woodley, he's been inactive, so it's kind of weird. I wonder what's up because he had a he had a lot of momentum the first half of that year, <laughs> and then yeah, it all went maybe, trailing. Maybe yeah, I could I could see that fight, Alves versus uh, Kim. Yeah, it's weird. A lot of people could see him fighting anybody right now because he just doesn't have a fight lined up. It's kind of weird. Um, yeah. And so yeah, it's just oh man, it's crazy. I, I believe that uh, Alves. I don't know. It's it's a good thing that he beat Mean. I wouldn't mind Gunnar Nelson either, but uh, um, he's ranked above him now, which is actually pretty surprising to me. Oh, well, I guess he did lose to Rick Story, and Alves beat Rick Story, I believe. They asked us. I'll yeah, go with I that one. Yeah, Duncan Alves Kim. Huh? Yeah, I think you could put Alves in there with someone just ranked above him. Just to get him higher in the rankings, have him go against someone ranked. Yeah. Yeah, I like. I think uh, Mean was 15 going into that fight, I believe. What happened? I, I believe Mean was ranked 15 going into the Alves fight, though. Was he? Hmm. I think so. I'm surprised he skips two guys with that win, then. But, uh. Yeah, like I said, I was surprised yeah, that he's but above him. Gunnar Nelson's coming off a loss, and Ryan LaFlair's been inactive, so it's not too surprising. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, all right, we'll go with that. All right, Dong Young Kim, Alvis, set it up, Dana. I know you're crying somewhere, but get it done. <laughs> <laughs> After the, again, great comeback. I don't think, the, and that wasn't the only one. The next one also was Talos Ladies versus Tim Boach. Now this fight banked fight of the night, and for good reason. I'm not disputing it as much as I'd like to give it to Tate and McMahon. Uh, I wouldn't want to take it away from that fight either. That fight was great. 
Tim Bosch comes in heavy-handed, landed some good strikes on Talos Ladies. Had me worried because I made he was one he was my most important pick of the night as far as MMA fantasy is concerned. Um, <laughs> and uh, and you know wow, almost had him uh, finished. But was able to put a lot of power on him, uh, landed some clean shots even, and so Talos Ladies showed a real good chin. Uh, able to get out of the first. Next thing you know, the second round's there. They trade even more. Ladies actually lands a few good ones and is able to get find it, uh, find uh, Bosch on the cage, take him down, gets on top, gets the submission. It, you know, basic, your almost your classic ladies who was able to get it down and really work that jujitsu that you know he was once known for, uh, being you know back in the day he was the Damian Maya before Damian Maya was Damian Maya. You know what I mean? Uh, so now, you know, now that he's back, it's good to see him come to form and for him to be back five and oh, with three finishes, two being by knockout, one by submission. Uh, he's on such a streak, you know what I mean? And, uh, it just sucks that middleweight's so tied up with all their contenders, either they're, uh, in a fight, sick or injured, uh, or just not fighting anybody right now. Um, but <laughs> that's just how it seems right now. So, I mean, the, the highest ranked person that ladies could fight is Tim Kennedy. Uh, which I wouldn't actually mind. I think that's a good test for ladies, definitely. Yeah. Or well, you could put him in there with uh, Musashi. That is – well, that is true. Yeah, how about that? I actually like that more. Musashi. Musashi coming off a win. Him coming off a win. That makes sense. Musashi actually – okay, we'll get that into that later. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and um, for me, this fight, it was, it was kind of like really untechnical. I mean – Oh, yeah, it was it, crazy. <laughs> I said on the last podcast, I think Tim Bosch just looked like shit recently. <laughs> and he didn't necessarily look like shit in this fight. They just kind of like got in the pocket, started swinging like wild haymakers, and they both connected on a few good punches. Bosch had a ladies hurt a little bit. Uh, ladies had Bosch hurt a little bit. And they both went at it for the first round. Then in the second round, the ladies came out, did what he should have in the first place, took Bosch down. Found the submission with a nasty arm triangle, and again I predicted another fight exactly correct, and I'm feeling good about myself. Lucky. All right. Anyway. Uh -oh, lucky, lucky. <laughs> it is lucky. Okay, it came down to him having to come back. <laughs> but then again, yeah, you're but, right. He, he did. Wasn't, he wasn't yeah. necessarily losing. He did. That was a pretty close first round. Mm. Uh, they yeah. both hurt each other. They both hurt each other, yeah, but it was clearly I, Bosch's I round. I would the round to Bosch, but I'm not saying it was like a, a blowout round or anything. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying, yeah, I felt like it was clearly Bosch's uh, round at the end of it. Not that it was because he was completely dominating or it was a 10-8 or anything, but yeah, you're right. But that was a great fight. Definitely earned fight of the night. Oh. Um, yeah, definitely. Great and now fight. we'll go on to the next fight where I prove you guys wrong again. Okay. Joe Lozon okay. versus Ally Akinta. All right, then. Go ahead. Joe you talk Lozon. first. Go ahead. All right. So <laughs> I said Al would win this fight. I was no, you didn't. Ahead. Yes, I did. Oh, okay. Maybe you did. <laughs> I definitely <laughs> did. I was a little hesitant. I was a little bit nervous. I, I said Joe could win if he found the submission. I was a little bit nervous that if Al would shoot in a little sloppily on a takedown and get choked. But I said it. Definitely said on this podcast, <laughs> this fight stinks on the feed. Al will win this fight. He's mm -hmm. looked a lot better on the feet as of late than Joe has. His strikes have looked very crisp. He knocked out Ross Pearson. He's on a three-fight win streak, knocking out Pearson, uh, Rodrigo Dam, and now Joe Lozon. I mean, it was pretty competitive in the first round in terms of striking, and then the second round, Lozon, uh, Al started landing, and he was landing nice strikes to the head and to the body, and then out of nowhere, he lands, I, I think, with a straight right and then just took over from there. Had Joe basically – I think this stoppage might have been a bit late because he rocked Joe and he almost finished him. And then oh, for yeah. the next 30 seconds had him running away. Lozon from literally him. did two laps around the octagon in, 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 yeah, in he, dizzy pain. He was basically just running away trying not to get knocked out. And he was basically out on his feet. He couldn't even – he could barely stand. And I give props to Joe because – that's the one tough guy because most guys would have been out already. And he was just trying to do anything in his power to keep himself standing. But in the end, Al just – Al was really smart. He didn't go rushing in after Joe. He stayed calm, walked him down, hit him with a few strikes. Lozon would go away, come down again, hit him with a few strikes. 
I don't think he, he stayed calm. I think he stayed composed, impressive. but he didn't get calm. He was all yelling at him. Yeah! Oh, oh yeah, I mean, <laughs> composed might be a better word to use, but mm-hmm. yeah, I'll look. Yeah, he didn't go look. all balls to the walls crazy, uh, 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 you know. He didn't, yeah, he didn't just go after him where he could have made a mistake because we know how good Lozon is even if he gets rocked and he can catch you in a submission at any time. He could drop for a leg, anything. So I yeah. think Al looked really good in this fight and he's now he's ranked number 15 in the world at lightweight. So I think he can get a – oh, yeah, actually, I slipped my mind completely. Al is fighting – He's um, already Jorge fighting. He's tra- Yeah, he pulled a Donald yeah. Cerrone and is now fighting Jorge Masvidal at UFC 62. Um, well, I, I don't know if that's tech- – that, that's close to a Donald Cerrone, but that's in two months, so. That's it's true. Exactly well, he well, I mean Donald Cerrone in the sense that he decided to take a fight less than 72 hours removed from the fight. Because <laughs> yeah, Donald Cerrone took fight. the took that, yeah, that Ben I, I Henderson think, fight two days after. Matchup. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's definitely an interesting matchup, and we can get more into that afterwards, but I'd like to hear your take on this fight. Him with Jorge Masvidal? No, him on... The Joe oh, Joe, well, yeah, I mean, you kind of took everything out of my mouth. He did exactly what you said he did. If it stays standing, it's it's, it's all Iaquinta, and it did. It stays standing. Lerlozon Lozon couldn't get a takedown, couldn't get it to the ground. Al Iaquinta knew that if it went there, he'd be in trouble, so he, he stayed away from it. That's smart, and that's exactly what he should have done. I think, you know, he I'm sure he was prepared as much as possible should it go down there that he could, that he would immediately try to get up and power his way through it, but... Um, yeah, I mean, I, he seems to have this, he seems to have this aura about him now that he, like, he just, he feels like one of these guys that's improving each time he's in there, but not in skill, not just in skill set, but in, in like fight IQ, kind of like Weidman, like Weidman, when he's in there, he makes smart decisions all yeah. the time, you know, and, uh, like you just feel it from Weidman, like he knows what he's doing in there. He's, he makes, he makes these clear cut decisions that are yeah. smart they, and you're like, wow, that's a great move, you know? Like, and um, both of them, they do a really good job listening to their corner, which, I mean, I guess you have to when you got Ray Longo and, and Sarah screaming at oh, you, yeah. but I'm, they definitely do a really good job of that. Yeah. <laughs> you could hear them. Um, I, one of the funny – I don't know if you heard this, but in, at the end of the first round, he's like uh, – Matt Sarah comes over. He's like, you just earned yourself some spaghetti, brother. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I was laughing my ass off when I heard that. It was so hilarious. Tell me you heard that. That was funny. No, I didn't notice it. Oh, I had, it was so funny. funny it got quiet like around that point, you know, because and you could hear it. And I was by a speaker because, uh, you know, I had yeah. gotten up to to grab a drink. I was at a bar when I was watching it, and I got up to grab a drink, so I went right by the speaker, and I'm watching the screen still, and you just see Sarah come up, and he's like, "Oh, good job, brother. You earned yourself some spaghetti with that one. Good job." <laughs> Oh, yeah, how good is that spaghetti? Yeah, I was out, I was out, watching, the fight. Yeah, I was out oh, watching the fight to myself, so I didn't really hear too well. Yeah, oh man, that was the, that was the best part of that fight. Uh, but yeah, his performance was 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 great. And like I said, yeah, he just seems to be making smart decisions in there to the point where you're like, man, you're fighting this guy where he's where he's already good on the feet. Now he's really starting to you know get so great on the feet. Before he he was he was capable of knocking guys out, but it wasn't like uh, technique was the, was the biggest uh, input in 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 uh, in his game, you know. As far as his hands, uh, they weren't as crisp as they look now, and he just seems to, you know, really start putting it all together. I think he's really starting to hit his stride, and I'm glad he's decided to put the to to you know step the gas on his momentum and take this fight with a guy named with a guy like Jorge. Jorge's a a game dude, you know what I mean, especially on the feet. So. He's definitely got his work cut out for him. This isn't Joe Lozon where, you know, Joe just ha- happens to be a brawler in the sense of, of his striking style. He's got some good technique. He sh- he shows it every so now and then, but Jorge is one tough dude, especially on the feet. Uh, not going to be an easy guy to put away. Not going to be an easy guy to strike with. Not going to be an easy guy to be on the ground with. Jorge is a perfect test to see where Al is right now, so I, I love that fight. And, yeah, uh, Joe, tough dude, man. Took everything that Al could throw at him, and and I was just thinking like, man, I just somebody needs to give him a hug, because he's <laughs> just he's you know because he's like crawling around trying to tell the ref, oh I'm fine, but you know great fight overall, yeah. great performance you by gotta, Al. You gotta love and respect Joe Lozon for just every how every time he steps in the octagon, he gives it his all. Yeah, I mean what what I really want to think is like you know out of everybody that fought on the card al probably had the best performance i mean Derek oh, yeah. brunson had a quick fight and so yeah it was just those two lefts and then he just you know put them away 
But, you know, Al was taking on a guy like Joe Lozon, you know. So, I mean, I mean yeah, it's another veteranized really, guy. But, you know. Guys he, haven't really done that to Joe Lozon. Yeah, exactly. You know, another thing being is that, you know, um, Derek Brunson kind of put him away too fast. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> In the sense that you don't get to see if his skill really has improved or, if, you know, if it could be, people could say it was a lucky punch. I don't necessarily think that. But it's just because of how other people see it. You look at Ally Quinta's fight, and you just know that the guy's getting better in, in more ways than one. So I believe he probably had uh, the best performance of the night. If like if like if I could um yeah. like and that sucks because I think he should have gotten an award because the improvement is showing. You know um the the fight was so dominant that I you know that I was surprised that he didn't get one. So yeah, exactly. I mean. He probably he probably should have got a performance of the night, but he his finish wasn't as flashy, I guess, as you could say, as Alvis's was, and then we had um yeah, but it, you know just just I think it's the key word is performance yeah. because yeah no I I know yeah. I get what you're saying I get yeah. what you're saying, but I I know that um Alvis had the flashy knockout and then uh ladies had the submission and usually they give one to each, so I can see why he didn't get it and um yeah him stepping up for the Masvidal fight I think is. I think it's going to be a fun fight. It's going to be a good test for him because Masvidal is a really good boxer and he's beaten some really good good uh, stand-up fighters. He, fin- he uh, beat Darren Kirkshank, who's one of the best strikers in the division, in my opinion. And he looks really good and he's a well-rounded guy and so is Al. So I, I, I could see, I don't know, I that's a tough fight to call because Al did look really good against Ross Pearson on the feet. So I, I wonder how he would look against Masvidal on the feet. Because Masvidal might be a better boxer, but Al's really just made strides, and if he has to get the fight down, I think he can. So that's an interesting one, but I think when it comes down to it, I'll be leaning towards Al. Good call. I'm going on to the co-main event now. This is uh unfortunately where we talk about Kelvin Gastelum, who you know we talked about saying you know he's a he's a he seems like really one of the humblest guys. He seems like one of the coolest guys. It just seems like it's obvious that he had a that he had a weight cutting problem because the reason he didn't weigh 180 because he couldn't cut to anything below that. I'm sure like his coach, his coaches say that he was like 175 the morning of weigh-ins and everything. And so, and that's actually like around where you want to be. You don't want to be any farther than that. And that's not a bad place to be either. So the, to be five or four pounds removed is a, is actually a good deal because then you got all morning to just skip meal you know, kind of, you know, get the body work and sweat and everything and, uh, and just, uh, you know, work that afternoon and then you'll be fine, you know, because then your metabolism wakes up, you put it in drive and, uh, you know, weight cutting is definitely one of the hardest things to do. I've done it myself and it's it's hard, especially because I fought at 145 and I, I generally weigh 160 to 165. So um, unless I know like a fight would come up, then I kind of kept myself low, like in the high 50s. Um but yeah, I mean, it's always the day before the day, the week, but essentially it itself is always the hardest because, you know, it just drags along, not eating too much, uh, you know, just needing to stay hydrated and all that such. I don't, uh, we, we still haven't heard exactly what it is that's wrong with him. We just know that he, he was just, he was close to fainting. He didn't per se, but it, it got to the point where they needed to take him to a hospital to get him checked. Surprisingly, he was, uh, you know, cleared to compete after returning from the hospital, but he was given fluids, and because of that, he weighed 180. So, uh, and it just sucks because I feel like at 170, he's not like a very big guy, you know. So it's, it just seems to be his body is not uh, accustomed to really cutting like the way that he is you know what i mean he really needs to find a better system but it seems just like lineker he's going to be blacklisted over to 185 um because uh I, I believe this is the second time he's missed weight and the third time that he, on the first try he didn't make it you know what i mean um yeah so it, it's become a, an issue I, with him as I, well I, go ahead yeah. um yeah that fight the fight itself uh, aside from guys against missing weight I thought Woodley clearly won the first two rounds, I'm pretty sure. And then Kelvin probably won the third. And I was surprised that it was a split decision because I thought Woodley clearly won the fight. And um, aside from that, it wasn't really the greatest fight. They both were content keeping it on the feet, even though Woodley's such a good wrestler. And Kelvin's not a bad wrestler himself. But uh, Woodley was good landing that right hand. He, He knocked Kelvin back a few times. And obviously, Kelvin didn't look his best. 
due to the fact that he missed weight and was having all those problems, as you stated before. And, um, yeah, but he didn't look entirely bad either. He didn't look bad. He didn't look good. He looked decent. But the fight itself wasn't that great. And the fact that Kelvin missed weight, again, I, I feel like I feel bad for him because he shouldn't be fighting at 185. He's not. I don't think he's a big enough guy to be fighting at 185 because even at 170, Sometimes he'd come, he come. Uh, Kelvin at his best shape at 170. He looks pretty good, but he's not like ripped. He's untreaded. He looks good though when he's when he's in shape at 170. He looks pretty good. That's where I feel like he should be at 185. I think the guys are just way too big for him. And I I think this is another guy who has to call, give Mike Dolce a call, beg Dana White to let him stay at 170, and promise to work with Dolce because Dolce he's, had him on weight. And, yeah. I mean. Henry Cejuda, you know, got immediately blacklisted to 135, took a fight yeah. at 135, won, and then begged Dana at the press conference, hey, just please give me another shot at 125. I think that's kind of what he needs to do. Maybe take a fight at 185, prepare his ass off for it, whoop some ass, then say, Dana, look, you know, I messed up, but I got Dolce in the corner. He's got that perfect record that uh, Chris Paliuk has been talking about. And, uh, I, you know, I'm ready to, you know, get this going and I'll make weight. Don't worry. Yeah, so. he just has to. Uh, Kel, and I've met I've met Kelvin in person. I met him really quick about I don't know two years ago, maybe a year and a half ago. Oh. Right after he came off the Ultimate Fighter. Cool. He's not a big dude. I mean, he's he's stocky for his size, but he's only like five nine. Yeah, he's, he's pretty tall. short, man. I he's mean, short. compare he's him like, to Chris Weidman. It's just not even yeah. fair. Um, like he's a he's not a tall dude. But I mean, I, yeah, he was one of the smallest like guys I, in the Ultimate Fighter house, you know. So I mean, yeah, like, it shows you like that he's a great fighter skill wise because it doesn't matter the yeah. size; he can still take guys on, he can still drop them, he can still hurt them. He's got the power, oh, yeah. but he's I mean, got the skill. One eighty five, and yeah, we know he won the Ultimate Fighter at one eighty five, but but he doesn't touch the top ten of that division. Yeah, I don't think he touches no, the top ten. I, I don't think he would either. I mean, I would never count him out. But the thing is, is that he. He shouldn't be fighting at 185, and they need yeah. to find a way to keep him at 70. And I have to make another just quick thing. It has nothing to do with the fight, really. But when Kelvin missed weight, and we were all surprised that they still let him fight, uh, Cowboy Cerrone offered to fight Tyron Woodley. And also, what's he did? What, did, did, what happened to his up, money? He, did, he, he, he that would have been the first time a fighter fought three times in one month. That's crazy. Yeah. Cowboy, and this was uh, right before the weigh-ins, Cowboy said he would drive down there and fight Tyron Woodley, and a few days prior to that, when Nick Diaz missed his flight, he said he would go fight Anderson Silva. Yeah, no, D Donald, Cowboy you, you, Cerrone, no, I mean, you just gotta love this dude, because when all these fights are falling out, you know you can always count on Cowboy Cerrone, Cowboy Cerrone to show up and just, he'll, he'll fight. The way he'll this fight. year's going, he's gonna get popped for something, I just, ugh. No, don't say that. <laughs> You're jinxed. You can't be saying that. Oh, this. I know. I can't. I already jinxed the bantamweight division. Uh, I know. You jinxed Dominic Cruz. I don't want you jinxing. I know. Dominic. Man, if somehow he ever found out about that, he'd find me and kill me, especially because I only live like two cities away. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sad part, man. But, you know, Donald, yeah, if every fighter were like Donald Cerrone, this sport would be better than football by now. Yeah, I mean, Cerrone just shows up to fight, and he'll show up any time, any place, and he'll show up to fight a guy who weighs 20 pounds more than him at least. Yeah. So, I mean, that's impressive. This guy, I love Donald Cerrone. Definitely. I kind of want to, you know, I, I I wouldn't mind seeing him have some fun fights when he's older at 170, but, you know, right now he's just he's just got such hot momentum at lightweight going that I just want to see him fight for that title once at least, you know? Yeah. So I don't, I don't want him to jeopardize it. Uh, thus far, he doesn't have a fight lined up, but rumors are spreading be from him Khabib. that he might f be fighting Khabib, which would be, uh, which certainly need to be a number one contender's fight. There's uh, nothing else that could be. Um, so, I, you know, and that's a tough matchup for him too. So, I mean, when the time comes, we'll talk about that. It's a tough fight, but yeah, as far as the Tyron Woodley Kelvin Gaslam fight, um, yeah, it was kind of a, a it was, it was not, I wouldn't say a lousy fight. It was very low tempo fight like nobody turned it up to a degree where it came to where you're thinking like oh he could finish him or oh you know he's uh, he's so aggressive how is he gonna you know get out of this you know there was never that kind of moment and uh you know nobody picked up the pace to where they made the the, the where they took the momentum away you know what i mean it was just either yeah. slightly on one side or slightly on the other 
was never the other way around. So or yeah, so. like um, Gastelum in the fight, he, he obviously he's a, an aggressive guy. He kept coming forward, and well, they did a good job when he was coming aggressively to hit him with the right hand. Yeah, definitely. That's what he should have done to Rory. But I mean, I guess he learned from yeah, that fight. Yeah, but Rory, so. it's a little bit different because Gastelum comes forward in pressure, but he doesn't have the reach as I was saying before. Rory has a long reach and is able to pop that jab. Gastelum's a small guy for the division. Doesn't Rory mean a fast, a explosive fight. guy like Woodley couldn't have done that against Rory, though. Yeah, but Rory's different. I mean, Kelvin's a small guy. I mean, he's five nine, and it is, he doesn't have the longest reach. Rory has a longer reach, and Woodley has a really long reach for the division. And he's just, he's a technician on the feet. He's a lot more of a refined striker than uh, Kelvin is. So, I mean, I'm not saying that Woodley couldn't explode and have get in on Rory a few times, but Rory's not going to let that happen very often. So that's all I'm saying. By the way, doesn't anybody think that um, Rory McDonald looks like Edward Nigma from Gotham? Yeah. I don't know who that is, but... You don't watch Gotham? All right, that's a discussion for another no, day. No, let's... Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> Just a fun fact. Anybody want to look that up? Go ahead. But yeah, I mean, well, with that win, it's kind of weird. I wonder where Woodley goes because we've been talking about Kelvin, but Woodley got the win. Um, so I mean, it's it's kind of weird because the, the he's like ranked number three in the, by by the UFC, and and he's mostly in the top five of of, of all credible media uh, rankings. So yeah. you know, it's kind of weird. Where do you put him? Hector. Him? Hector. Huh? Well, Hector's fighting Rory. At 186. I know. know. (laughs) What? No, I know. I'm just... I'm saying I wanted that Hector Woodley fight to happen before. That'd be be a good fight. That'd be extraordinarily intriguing because of the fact that they're both power hitters, but their grappling isn't any joke. You know what I mean? Um, Yeah. Hector with his explosive judo and... uh, Tyrone with his with his effective wrestling, that's just yeah, that looks like a lot of fun. I would definitely yeah, I, want that I fight. Know, I don't know exactly who you'd give to Woodley right now though. There's not a lot of names out there. Yeah, I mean he's gonna have to fight. He's gonna have to like. I, I mean maybe he could fight like the loser of Brown Hendricks because I I do want to see him fight Brown, but uh. Yeah, you could do something like that. Yeah, it'd have to be like the loser of a, of a high ranking fight, or you know he'd have to you know take a you know he'd have to take a, a lower ranked opponent right now. Because yeah. it just doesn't seem like he's in that title picture. Because the guys above him, one of them's beat him, and the other one's you know already buying for a shot to try and fight uh, Robbie again. And that's Hendricks. So, but if Hendricks loses to Matt Brown, that that'd be an interesting fight. All right, so let's move on to the main event of the evening. Well, then that was just—I mean, that was as unpredictable as of a fight as we could have expected. You know, I mean, we literally didn't expect Diaz to act act like. Well, I mean, I guess he could have, but. Not as insane as he was. I mean, he was actually doing the funny stuff that Silva does to people, you know, where he puts his back against the cage and he's just like keeps like he turns his back on opponents. Uh, and uh, he doesn't twerk, but Diaz kind of you know just added his own spice to it. But uh, I was surprised by that first round, but you know it, it seemed to have been effective in the sense that it kept Silva away at, at to to a degree. And what I loved about it is because it was so obvious that Diaz was trying to get Silva to commit to doing something because Silva's so, um, you know, so accustomed to counter striking uh, because he's the guy that you know because Diaz does yeah. move forward and that's just not effective against a guy like Silva and he knew that. Yeah. Um, now, did he use any bit of the game plan that I laid out in the last podcast? Absolutely not. He didn't do that. He didn't really use much of his cardio at all. Um, like, I wonder if he was even tired by the end of that fight. Um, but, you know, he, he did keep Silva, you know, not doing much. And, like, because I, I don't know what anybody says. That first round was very close to the point where you could have given it to Diaz statistically. Um, and then that second round was easily Diaz's. So the first two rounds, I'm thinking like Diaz could have possibly taken the first two rounds. So this is getting interesting. Uh, but from there, Silva kind of took over, um, you know, because uh, yeah, I don't I, know about the second round, but the second round he landed, yeah. he landed, he literally landed a ratio of two to one on punches uh, to the head uh, in that second round to Silva. I'm looking at the stats right now. Silva landed 21 of 39. Diaz landed 15 of 37. How much did he land in the first as opposed to Silva? Silva landed 
Actually, wait, they were tied by the middle of the second round. That's true. 21 of 40, Diaz landed 19 of 60. In the second? Or first, you mean? Hello? I'm pretty sure he outlanded him in all five rounds. You, you're pretty sure he what? Outlanded? Oh, I struck him? Yeah. Oh. Well, I just feel like in the second round he came forward more and it looked like he landed more punches. It, felt, it literally looked like he landed double the punches. Yeah. No, he definitely... Did. I felt like he won the, the second round definitively. Every other round he, he, he probably lost, yeah. Especially third from fifth. It's not even debatable. The first one was... Uh, I mean, it was already a wacky show the first round, so it's really hard to judge that, that period. Because <laughs> he lied yeah. down. He put his back against the wall. He talked that yeah. shit. Did all I mean, that. that first round was definitely really entertaining. He <laughs> Nick Diaz legitimately laid on the floor. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't get past that. I thought that was pretty hysterical. Yeah. I, I mean, the only thing was is that was this a good? Was this like a great fight? No, I think it came a few. It definitely came a few years too late because if this was Anderson before he got his leg broke, before he got knocked out. Nick Diaz would have been coming forward. Anderson would have had his hands down, looking to counter, looking to move his head and land big punches. Well, I don't know about that because because of... Punch, so I think... Right, go ahead. What happened? No, go ahead. Oh, no, because Anderson kept his hands up the entire fight. He looked a little bit tentative just in his striking alone. Like, he didn't want to engage too much. He didn't really throw anything too crazy, and especially in the beginning of the fight. And um, yeah, it wasn't a great fight. I wasn't like, I was I was more excited about Anderson returning and the fight, the names in general than the actual fight because I didn't think it was the most exciting fight. I thought the rounds were really close. I mean, there was a few rounds where Anderson won pretty decisively, but it, maybe two. But aside from that, the rounds were pretty close. Anderson did start turning it up a little in third, fourth, and fifth, but the first and second, as you said, were close. And um. Yeah, I think Anderson, he, he looked, he was faster than Diaz. He landed more in every every round. He didn't throw as much as Diaz did, which was expected, but he landed more. And, I mean, it was, it was what it was. I was just happy to see Anderson get a win, which is now, unfortunately, tarnished. But it, it was yeah. just... Yeah, I wonder if, like... Well, I mean, I guess not since it, since the, NS, the NAC could pull the same shit they did with Jones in that it was a test that was done out of competition out but, of competition yeah but, but it's um, a steroid so i wonder if that changes things um yeah it, i think because it's a performance enhancer it will and anderson should be handed a uh, suspension and um another thing about the fight i was actually surprised by is um nick diaz was actually throwing he was a bit more versatile in his strikes he was throwing some light kicks and he was throwing, he started throwing spinning kicks and stuff, which apparently he started throwing spinning shit now. <laughs> yeah, I but mean, yeah, I, 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 I like that he mixed back. it up, but that's to be expected with the kickboxing he had in his corner. But, I, I mean, just, man, if he'd have turned it up whenever Silva came on the inside, because there were combinations and times where, or, I mean, yeah, there were combinations that Diaz landed that looked beautiful. They were on point, he landed on Silva hard at times, like to whenever he came in the inside. Um, and then, uh, of course, he 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 wasn't a, he wasn't afraid to really go punch for punch with them in the clinch. I'm sure he wouldn't have appreciated a knee, but you know he wasn't scared to punch you know punch play punch out in the clinch. So uh, you know it just you know I, I just man, like I said, if he had pulled what I said to do, which is use his cord cardio in a, in in a way where Silva has to work to try and get away or or to, to you know make at least Diaz respect him to you know then uh then I felt he would have been a lot more successful. So I mean it just yeah, sucks I mean, that he, he didn't do that. <laughs> he definitely moved forward and everything, but I think there was a few things that That's why Anthony was Johnson's like, my boy. Because <laughs> he listens yeah, to I me. Mean, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think that Anderson was just a bit tentative to go out there and start throwing stuff to leave his hands down and use his head movement a bit more. But, um, yeah, it, it was what it was. And, um, uh, again, about the steroid, Anderson should receive a suspension. And um, he has to go to a hearing with the NAC, a mandatory hearing, I believe it is. 
on February 17th. Um, and he oh, should today. be, according to um, that's that's two two that's two exactly two weeks from now. Yeah, on February 17th, Anderson will likely receive a temporary suspension, according to uh, the NAC chairman Francisco Aguilar, and the full hearing will take place. It should take place in March or April. Ollie on Fight Pass. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Chails and Vitors was on there. Why couldn't? Why can't his be? Well, that'd be interesting. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it is. Yeah, making us pay for shit. Might as well. So, I, I, I mean, now with all this said, um, do you think either of these guys fights again? I don't know. That's a tough one. I mean, I, mean, I, 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 I with with Silva, it really needs to be a thing where if he does come back, um, I want him tested up the ass, and uh, you know, I also, you know, I, I want him to to really know that he should not fight for the title anymore. I don't think a guy that you know is is so previously is caught on steroids should fight for the title. Um anytime soon and with him being the age that he's at shouldn't i already didn't think he needed to fight for the title now i just hope that he doesn't ever you know i mean it would be a bad move for the ufc to even put him in that position right now so i just want if he comes back to just do the money fight idea like i said um i don't know if you listen to the podcast uh of, of recent because uh, i know you've been mia in, in certain aspects in the last month but i just think that money fights are appropriate uh I before this I wrote an article today I don't know if it's out yet but um but I wrote an article stating who I'd like to see Silva fight next that's Rampage Jackson should he get past Fabio Maldonado um you know I, I wouldn't mind seeing and, and and another thing about uh him being at 185 kind of calls into question maybe why he was using that stuff because uh the stuff can help you lose weight um in a sense um so. You know, I, if he comes back, I just want him to come back, do the money fights, take the clean stuff, come out, say he's sorry, at least apologize, allow himself to receive whatever punishment he receives. Um, you know, especially as long as it fits the crime, like a year or something. I don't know, but you know, it's just it's gonna be hard. It's this is today. This this year is gonna be a tough year. <laughs> The rest of this year looks so bleak. I mean, I'm excited for the Johnson Jones fight. That's the best part. Uh, the fights. I mean, the fights. Yeah, we, this, yeah, we have Conor Aldo. We have a lot of good fights coming up, but just it sucks that all this, you know, this bullshit in politics yeah. of our sport is is kind of really bringing it down. You know, yeah, with all the please. stuff. With all the stuff that happens in other sports, you know, guys getting caught on steroids, guys punching their wives in the face, you know, guys punching their players, their teammates in the face, guys shooting their legs and stuff. With with all the crazy stuff that other sports like football and basketball and baseball have, it never it never ruins the integrity of the sport. But because of where Anderson Silva is at and because of the high level caliber, because of the legendary status that surrounds him, it just, man, brings such a cloud over over mma in general the way that yeah, he said I, that it could i also think it has to do with the fact that it's a combat sport well damn, damn right yeah because guys and but i mean football isn't a combat sport but it's a physical sport gen, def, gen, it's, it's especially you know so yeah, but it's a little bit different in the fact yeah yeah that, i know in the fact that in football you're you're trying to hit someone but you're not trying to take them out of their consciousness yeah exactly and it's you know, I, that's why you know. That's why I say you know, no matter how much that stuff goes on in other sports, it it's not gonna affect them like it's like it feels like it's affecting this sport right now. Like, yeah, I agree. Uh, another thing, I think, I think if we do it, see Anderson back again, which I'm not sure if we will now because of the steroid allocations. Well, not allocations. He did pop positive for steroids with the positive test. I don't think we'll see him back, but if we do, I I don't know now because the timetable is going to be different. I would have liked to see him fight the winner of uh, Michael Bisping, C.B. Dalloway, especially if Bisping were to win that fight. Yeah, Bisping was calling out both Silva and Diaz, but doesn't yeah. seem like – because let's not forget Diaz is also in the shitter here. Um, he's, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean he's got to deal with uh, being – 
uh, being in trouble for his third test now. But I'm um, not sure if he'll get punished. That's the thing because why wouldn't it's a he? Fight, right? That wasn't out of competition. No, I mean it was in competition. I said post, like, like post fight, like he he got tested yeah, right yeah. after the fight. Oh, it was a urine. It was a urine test. It wasn't a blood test, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I I just mixed things up. Yeah, he'll probably be suspended as well. Yeah, exactly. And I don't, you know, Diaz is weird. He always talks about how he wishes he could just be away from the sport, but you know, the money talks, and so. It just seems like money fights is all he's there for. I, I don't know who else he could fight right now. That'd be a money fight that, that even after three losses, who don't even want to see him fight. It'd have maybe to be a, a crazy name. but Maybe a content rematch. <clears throat> I guess, but I mean, does that even appeal to Diaz anymore? I don't know. I mean, the thing <laughs> is, is even if he gets like a year, six months, I don't think it's as big of a deal for him because I think he would have took that time off anyway and – I think I think there's a we're more likely to see Nick Diaz back than we are to see Anderson Silva back. Yeah, because I mean nobody's gonna give Diaz shit. I mean I mean of course some fans will, but it's like they'll be ignored. It's not you know, it's not like we'll be listening, seeing what they have to say. When t- people are gonna talk about Silva in this test, they're gonna listen, they're gonna read, they're gonna you know either uh, fight it or agree with it and and spread it, and it's just you know. Like I said, the, the thing with Silva is so big, it, it pales in, you know, D- Diaz's test pales in comparison, so, um, and that's that's kind of weird, but at the same time, you know, he got popped for marijuana, which in, in, in my opinion is not a performance-enhancing drug, um, so I, you know, I think it's silly that he got caught, I mean, that's kind of silly, but... <laughs> Because he shouldn't have, but he did, and so that's what happens. And if that's what that's what if that's what's going on, then that's you know what he's got to deal with. But you know, it just sucks because man, I mean, it 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 was one of those things where it was finally coming into fruition the idea of money fights, which I like. I like that 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 they that they were starting to come into effect here. You know, money fights, fights where these guys are veterans. They don't need to fight for titles anymore, but they have a name. People want to watch them fight, and you just put them against each other, which is smart. It makes money. It gets fighters paid. It's and it, and you know I feel like it, it just it helps. It benefits everyone. Um, ho- hopefully more so the fighters than anybody else, which is uh you know so it's so unfortunate that this happened to two of the guys involved in that kind of a fight, because now you know maybe it might not happen as often moving forward. So. Yeah, I, I see out. what you're saying. And, um, yeah, let's just, um, I think we should move on to some MMA news. And, um, Go I ahead. wanted to bring, I wanted to bring this up. I'm not sure if you've seen it, but it, it's trending right now on Facebook. I just saw and it oh, no. reminded me of this. Have you seen the video of Daniel Cormier? Yeah. The, the parody of All About That Base for the MMA Awards. All About That Cake and Chicken, yeah. It's pretty funny. If it you haven't seen funny. it, it's like, well, it's because uh, there were a few of them. Mike Pyle did a, did like a, a funny car commercial thing where he's like, where he's Matt McConaughey in that car talking to himself. Oh, but he's doing that. it for like a long period of time for silly questions. Yeah, it's pretty I funny. Yeah, no, go watch that. Yeah. It's funny. It's not as funny as the cake and chicken one, but it's pretty funny. <laughs> There's nothing beats the cake and chicken. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's on YouTube, yeah, I'm sure. And uh, the MMA Awards, if you haven't got the results, they're up now, and they happened a few days ago, and it's airing on Fox Sports 2 tomorrow night. All right, so do you want to Well, technically to, 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 today, tonight, because this will be up to the next uh, day. Oh, yeah. So, so, tech, so tonight, people, just so you know, <laughs> what were yeah, we saying? So, uh, yeah, you want to go into Vitor... Oh uh, well, yeah, we could definitely get into that. That's uh, I don't like that he's you know, uh, it's not even that I'm mad that he's not on on the card that I'm going to anymore. Uh, it's about you know he was given a shot to fight for a belt against uh, who was it? Machida. Machida and Machida said yes, and then he said no because he was like, oh, that's not who I was preparing for for a year. <laughs> it's like, well, you know. Neither was he preparing for you, so it's not like it's any big of a discrepancy for either of you guys. It's not like he was training to fight a power puncher for a year yeah. before coming and into he's that fight. The, and he's also taking the fight on a month's notice. 
Yeah, I mean it's kind of weird. He he was able he was willing to fight John Jones on three weeks notice, um, and then called Leoto a, 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 a what's the word a, a diva for not accepting. The, he would call both him and John Jones a diva for not for both not accepting certain fights. Um, yeah. But then, of course, it's the it's the other way around this time, where Vitor is in technically in the position of where John Jones was at, in that you know his opponent falls out, he gets a chance to fight for a belt, um, and he says and he says no to it. He says no to Machida, in the sense yeah, where John I mean, Jones said no to Chael Sonnen. You know, um, so now he's exactly the diva. All. He's basically just all these hypocrites, man. This is ugh. yeah. I mean, with, with Vitor. He was supposed to fight Chris Weidman in the main event of UFC 184. And then again, unfortunately, Weidman falls out with a rib injury. And it, it sucks. Another big injury already in 2015. Yes. And Weidman really injury prone. And then uh, Dana White offers Leo uh, Apparently, Vitor and his wife, Dana White, were saying, were hitting up his phone saying, oh, we want another fight. We want to stay on the card. And then they offer him Machida and he backs out. But apparently... He said it was because he wasn't preparing for a southpaw, but he would take fights with uh, Jacare, Yoel Romero, Chris, uh, not Chris Weidman, uh, Luke Rockhold, and a, for some reason, Mark Munoz was another name in there. Yeah, for, I, I mean... For an interim title. And Dana said that they they sent him another fight, so... He only said Jacare because he knew... Know, he he, be let me maybe. tell you this. He only said Jacare because he knew Jacare couldn't accept that fight. He was already on this card and got pulled out because he was sick. So he already knew Jacare wouldn't accept that fight. He just added that name to kind of make it look bigger. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I would, I would like to see uh, a Rockhold rematch off TRT because I think Rockhold would win a rematch in this fight, and or even a Yo Yoel Romero fight. Yeah, I mean Yoel was up, was uh, was down. I mean he put it on, posted on Twitter a couple days ago that he was down to accept that fight. Uh, so yeah. I'm pissed. <laughs> that he... And Musasi said he would take the fight too, even though he wasn't one of the names in there. And uh, I would like to see it stay on the card because just getting off on a tangent a little bit, the thing is, is that this card is not a good card, top to bottom. It's not a good. It's not a pay per view worthy card. What 184? 184 is not a pay. -per -view yeah, it is. Shut up. No, it's not. It's <laughs> not a pay per view worthy. It is card to me. Whatsoever. Damn it. Yeah, that's just because you're going to it and you want to pretend that it is. Yeah, so I'm shut gonna, up. I'm going to lay down some truth right now. It, I'm going to kick your it's ass. It's kind of ridiculous. About, the UFC is kind of just it, – it's frustrating because, I mean, we, we see it a different way. I have a friend who lives in England, and they're like, oh, yeah, it's not – because they don't pay for pay-per-views, and they just get the fights free, so it's kind of – You just no totally snitched on your friends on, a, on our podcast. How dare you? Yeah, yeah. So, no, I mean, no, in England, there isn't pay-per-view. Wait, what? Oh, those bastards. Pay-per-view right. is American. There's no pay-per-view in England. That's pretty gay. I don't know why. I, I'm pretty sure England... Leave it up to America to charge us, I mean, folks. I'm pretty sure America is the only way, place we have pay-per-views. I'm pretty sure the pay-per-view cards are shown everywhere else on TV networks. I might be wrong about this, but I was told that they don't have pay-per-views in England, so it doesn't really make too much of a difference for the big MMA fans, but even though it's not the greatest card to begin with, but it's just, um, I I mean, no one, who wants to pay $60 to see Raquel Pennington and Holly Holm in the co-main event? It's not a bad fight, but it's not a co-main event of a pay-per-view. Uh, they just did that so they could ma like make oh, history no, by making it the first main and co-main to have women uh, fill yeah. it up. But I, I get that, but the sad thing is that was the only other serviceable co-main event, even though it hardly is, because what else are they going to put in there? They have Jake Ellenberger versus Josh Koscheck, who both have lost like their last three fights, and they both have been on skids. They have Alan Juban versus Richard Walsh, who most people don't know, and I mean, yeah, I, at the casual MMA fan, I have no clue who these two guys are. And then you have Tony Ferguson versus uh, Gleison which is a good fight. That fight is exactly where it should be. Or maybe, I mean, on the bottom of her pay per view, that's not bad. But the other fights, they're not really eye catching. And the only fight that really is is the main event between Rousey and Zangano. So it would serve this card well if Vitor stayed on the card just to help it out, even if it was in a co main event, depending on who he fights. But 
Yeah, I, I don't I like I say screw card, it and keep Yoel on the card, I mean, but, you know, that sucks. Yeah, that I mean, sucks. I don't know. I don't get why they don't give him Yoel. One of those fights, if you, if you, I mean, yeah, we maybe they did. Dana White said he sent them a different fight. We just haven't heard anything yet. So it could be Yoel. We're not, I'm not too sure, but it definitely <sighs> could be. And um, the, the card, I, I don't like this card for a pay Oh, mean, well, hold on. That's what it looks like. It has a good headliner, and the rest of the card is okay. okay. But it's not pay per we were at the end of, I don't want to talk to you I anymore. I hope they keep veto on it because we definitely help out. Yeah, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Oh, I'm you're sorry. You're not cool. You're ruining. Oh, you're ruining my happiness. <laughs> as if <laughs> I wasn't already sad enough as it was today. Because <laughs> yeah, and to add to our uh, question before, Mark Munoz has a fight. He's fighting on 184 against Rowan Carnario. I don't know who he is. Oh, I totally forgot about that. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, Carnario is one of these guys coming from Legacy FC. He's uh, he's looked all right. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't know about fighting Munoz, but you know, I would think Munoz would want to win that and get on the Philippines card. Um, Do we have any other MMA news to talk about? Uh, oh well, let's. I mean, we were, we were going to bring up who Faber could fight other than Lineker next, because that main event has pulled out and they still need a replacement. Oh, that's interesting. Um. I don't know. I'm I was thinking Frankie Edgar, but you know, because what's he doing? But and especially of, because of the, the fact that that fight. I can't think off the top of my head. There's um. What'd you say? What happened? What did you say? Cut off. Oh no! I was asking like, uh, what do you think of Frankie Edgar dropping down, uh, five pounds, make it fit, maybe fight at a catch weight like 140 with Faber? I mean, if they do that and both would agree to it, that would be pretty awesome. Not gonna lie. Um, I would definitely want to see that fight, and then if Frankie were to win, he could fight for the title. But it could definitely it could hurt him if I mean, there's not much else for to give Frankie right now. So yeah, he has to wait until the summer until somebody until that title's fought for. So I mean, I just figure he, he should keep himself busy. I wouldn't. I'm I'm expecting him to fight on the New Jersey card, honestly. But um, yeah. thus far he hasn't had a fight announced. So I mean, why not put him in the main event? I mean, it, it is a month away. So I mean, I know that that that's tough. Um, so with that being said, you know, it might not possibly happen. So, I mean, it, it would be smart to look at other bantamweight options, maybe even featherweight yeah. options. Why not? You know, why not go um, back up to featherweight for a little bit and have a little fun? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of guys at bantamweight, which they're ranked, but I can't tell if they have, I don't know if they have a fight or not. Um, I don't know if Yuri Alcantara had a uh, favor already beat him. Um, Johnny Eduardo, does he have a fight? Does Caraway have a fight? Oh, I would love it if he got beat by Caraway, but Caraway is not a, a, a main event guy. Um, hmm. No, I'd love it if he beat Caraway. Oh, well, I'd everybody love it if would. If he were to beat Caraway, not if he would get beat by Caraway. No, that's what I said. Um, yeah, you also have guys like uh, Mitch Gagnon who just lost to Henry Brow. You have Joe Soto. So there's guys you can give him just to keep him on the card. Joe but, Soto makes sense, uh, just because yeah. you know people got to see him fight uh, for a title, even though maybe they wouldn't, might even some might not have even understood the circumstances behind it. So um, another thing is that you know he has a Bellator yeah, fan this, following, and uh, putting him on free fight card makes sense. Yeah, you could give him any one of those guys if they don't have a fight coming up because they're all ranked, and it's just a fight to keep favor moving along, really. Yeah. I, I, um, yeah, it's hard, you know, just yeah. thinking about the top bantamweights. I'm more eager to see him fight off featherweight again. But uh, Yeah, it would be cool if you fought Frankie. I, I'd like to see that. Yeah, or Aaron, any featherweight, you know, like uh, like Eddie Alvarez. Yeah, I like, actually have um, – I, I wanted to save this to the end of the podcast, but I actually have uh, some cool news out of Brooklyn. Brooklyn, Brooklyn. All right, so – um. You heard that um, Nick Lentz's opponent uh, for the upcoming UFC fight night in two weeks is out, right? Tiago Tavares is injured. Oh, uh, yeah, I heard about that. I did, yeah. You heard about that. Yeah. Okay, so um, one of um, the guys he comes down, I train at Brooklyn MMA in Brooklyn, and uh, one of the guys he trains at Mutant MMA in Long Island, they come down to train at once a, usually once a week, sometimes more or less. Um, their fighter, who is the CFFC cha featherweight champion, Levon Moncachevelli, is filling in. Moncachevelli? That just sounds so East Coast, man. 
I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right. But, the first um, time you said it sounded great. <laughs> Monkishvili? I don't know. He's, he's, no, we'll I go know. with that. Monkishvili. That just sounds so East Coast thug. I love it. I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm saying it right. Well, tell him that's how he needs to pronounce it from now on. All right, so <laughs> what I'm saying is that uh, Levon, the CFFC featherweight champion, is filling in for Tiago Tavares, making his UFC debut against number eight ranked Nick Lentz. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's that's awesome. Yeah, they'll be fighting on the top. I hope he wins. Yeah, Nobody I mean, likes Lance, so win. you know he he has a chance to really make himself a following early. <laughs> yeah, he has. Um, they're fighting at the. They're headlining the Fox Sports One prelims at the Henderson versus Thatch card, and um, yeah, I'd like to see Levon win this fight just because. I mean, how rare is it for a guy to get a replacement fight on? Again, the top 10 guy in the UFC. Yeah, I mean, that's lucky. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. He's Levon right now is 6-1. and one. He lost, um, when he had the title, he lost a majority decision to Alexandre Bezerra, and then he beat him recently by unanimous decision to reclaim his belt. And he's 6-1 six, six and one with um, three knockout TKO wins and three decision wins. Cool. Well, so, good yeah, luck to him. What's his name again? Levon. Levon Makashvili. Maka, uh, I like it how you said it before. Makashvili. That's the dopest yeah, way to say I, it. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I said it correctly. If, if I'm, I'm have like, him listen to this podcast, and if I said it right, then you know, tell tell him to follow me. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I just, no, uh, you know, uh, he, good luck to him. No, I'm not a fan of Lance at all. His attitude has always irked me. So. Um. <laughs> yeah, and he also likes to wrestle guys a lot, so I that's there's nothing dude, wrong with that. Lens Lens every yeah, now and again can put on a good Le- fight. If Levon keep the fight on the feet, on the feet, and he could take. I mean, if he wins his fight, he'll be in the top fifteen most likely. So what's what's Levon's what's Levon's uh, overall style like? What's he best with? Um, he's a pretty good wrestler. He's a good stand up fighter though. Really? All right, cool. I'll look him yeah, up. So I mean, if he can keep if he can keep it on the feet, I could see him winning that fight. Okay, I'll look him up then. That sounds interesting. Last one, last thing before we shut this down. Who do you who who uh, or who? Um, how do you see Benson Henderson doing at, at welterweight? Now that he's he's uh for those that don't know, he's moving up to welterweight and will be fighting in two weeks, uh February nineteenth, I believe no or eighteenth I believe against uh what's his name. Brandon Thatch in the main event of UFC Fight Night 60 in Denver, Colorado. I believe it's Denver. I could be wrong. It might be Boulder. One of the two. Um, and so how do you see Benson Harrison doing at welterweight? All right. So I'm not going to make my prediction on this fight yet. We'll save that for next time. But yeah. um, um, I'm, not, I'm not too sure just because if Benson is a pretty big guy. He's had a hard time making weight sometimes at – he has hinted at wanting to go to 170 in the past. Yeah. And I think he'll do well, but the only thing is that Brandon Thatch is a huge welterweight, and he has finishing power. So it, it, I think Benson's best bet would probably be to take this fight to the mat. But um, I think it's not the best matchup for him and Brandon Thatch, but in terms of fighting at welterweight, if he continues to do so, I don't think it's the worst thing. It's certainly a good spectrum to really see what Benson can do because he is fighting a very talented up and comer in Brandon. Uh, he is the former uh, lightweight champion, so uh, it, it really is a good test for both men. So I do like the fight. I would have liked to have seen Cerrone get in there, but at the same time, I'm happy he's not. So um, for the reasons I explained earlier, I'm glad he. I would love to see him fight Khabib next, get that title shot, and see what he can do this year. You know, see if he gets that. And then after that, just, let, you know, have him fight it once a week. That'd be cool um, if he doesn't win the title. But guarantee you me, he's going to be one of the most active champions should he win that belt. <laughs> but that's one of the fun things about Cerrone. So with that being said, I'm ready to cut this down. Yeah, it's already been so just... such a sad day. I'm ready to sleep. <laughs> yeah, me too. It's 1230 over here. Yeah. So. It's uh for for the fans listening to this today on the fourth of February we uh we appreciate you guys we we are mourning just like you guys are about this unfortunate news going on 
uh, we hope you guys stay fans because I'm already seeing a lot of people saying they don't even want to be fans anymore. I don't know how serious that is, but it just seems like with something as crazy as this, uh, I understand why uh, why some of you would want to feel that way. But stay loyal, stay, keep with the sport. I know that this year looks grim, but thus far, the one thing you can look forward to are great fights because uh, this month did give us a lot of negative shit, but it also gave us a lot of great fights, and that's the best part about it. And so with that, I believe that we have a lot of good fights coming up, especially this month. While Chris may not think the pay-per-view is that good, I think it will end up being a great card overall. I think the fights will, will be kick-ass. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, but I, I, I believe that this fight or that this uh, that the, the upcoming months worth of fights are going to be great. So as long as you're a fan of fights, hang in there because I think it gets better. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way of putting it. Well, um, yeah, thank you guys all for listening. You can find us on Stitcher Radio which is a mobile app, and you can find us on iTunes as well to download the podcast there. Be and free to give us feedback and let Chris... and review because it yeah. really helps out a lot. What's the matter? Uh, I was going to say, be free to give us feedback and let Chris know that I do the intro better. Yeah, he probably does. I'm not going to lie, but <laughs> I just want to give him a shot. And um, yeah, just um, make sure to give us a rating and review on iTunes and Stitcher. If you like the podcast and like the MMA discussion page up there and the Sports Matter page on Facebook. Um, aside from that, thank you guys again for listening. You can follow me on Twitter at Chris Paliuka and you can follow Sports of Anarchy at Sports of Anarchy. And you can follow me at Nick the Phantom. Uh, all one word, obviously. <laughs> uh, Put your we, phone on silent, Nick. We all hear it vibrating. Yeah, my bad. That's my, yeah, it's just people talking more silver shit, so. <laughs> what a what a day! What a year it's already been. But good to ha- we'll ha- right. we'll hang in there. <laughs> Once again, thank you all for listening. Bye. Have a good one.